I guess that person's family and some co-workers that um, some foul play was involved and so they suspect that he might have been murdered um, so this has a lot of uh, history behind it Well, good morning, everyone. Another beautiful day. This is Sunday, the 13th of August. And today we're gonna do a trip to, I've been, I've been to this place another time, probably around two years ago, but it was very brief. It wasn't really explaining the area that well. And today we're gonna go to um, what they call Fernald Nature Preserve. And when I get there, I'm going to explain a little bit more what Fernald is and go over some of the some of the features of the plant. It was a prior uranium plant that has been shut down. According to them, it's safe to go in. The public is safe to go in there, so or they wouldn't allow it to be open. So they converted it into a, a nature preserve, and that's where we're going to go today. But first, I have to stop and get some fuel, some petrol. So we're going to stop here at Casey's and we're going to get some fuel before I head out there but again a beautiful day the sun is out and it's just going to be nice a nice ride on a lazy Sunday Love that little compartment there. That's so awesome. No, I don't want to join your rewards. No, I don't want a receipt. Okay. What is the fuel today? Three dollars and forty-eight cents a gallon. Not sure what it is in your neck of the woods, but to me that's a little high. And so, what can you do though? Guess I can convert to an electric scooter, but this bike gets a hundred miles a gallon, so we'll be good. And that only took 1.3 gallons. Now it, was, it wasn't completely dry. I had probably a quarter tank in there, I would say. Okay. Thank you, come again. Probably will. Okay. So we are off. Well, enjoy the ride. I'll make it quick. I'm not going to film the whole whole ride. I'm going to save my battery juice for when I get there. Um, so we are we are on our way. I would say probably take me about 30 minutes from here, and we'll check it out when I get there. We'll see you guys soon.
Wow. Whew. It was very quiet out here. I'm not used to quiet. Man, where we live, it's just nonstop noise, traffic, cars, what have you. Oh, man. Hear that? Silence. So this is Fernald Nature Preserve. And I'm going to tour some of the back area here. But this whole, this whole facility back in the day, over a thousand acres, I believe they said. So there's trails throughout here. There's actually seven miles of interlinking trails. Um, but I believe I read this is the uh, large, large pond trail. So if anyone's from this area, Cincinnati, or I mean, it might be worth a visit because it's a really nice. Um, you can see where the 1.4 miles. So you get to go all around, all all around the the wetland there. These are the kind of species you would see here. So if you are a photographer and you have those long, high-powered zoom lenses that cost 15 grand easy, you might be able to get some really nice shots back here. I tried it. Um, like I said, I was into photography for a lot of years, but I never had the, uh, the gear to reach. I was not going to spend that kind of money on, on a hobby, you know. So this is Fernald. One gentleman walking up there I saw. Go back by the visitor's area. Sight Overlook. No fishing. Get the wildflowers. Isn't that, isn't that cool?
can never have enough pockets. But I refuse to wear a fanny pack. I mean, I, I would, but I should get one of those man bags, you know, that you just strap on you. That would be a cliff bar. You ever have a cliff bar? These are awesome. And you eat one of these and you'll go half a day without being hungry. Cliff. So this site was established in 1948 to produce fabricated uranium feed core for nuclear reactors. And those reactors were in Tennessee, South Carolina, and the state of Washington. The plant is consists of over a thousand acres. And this site was chosen because it was between the uranium delivery between New York and New Orleans. So from about 1951 to 1989, this plant converted uranium ore into metal. And then they fabricated that metal into elements for nuclear reactors. So there were about nine plants on this whole, like a thousand acres of property. Well, in 1984, there was a big scandal uh, because a lot of people believe that um, someone like did some foul play. Um, one of the pipe fitters that worked here was apparently um, gone missing. And it was led to believe that, I guess that person's family and some coworkers that um, some foul play was involved. And so they suspect that he might've been murdered. Um, so this has a lot of uh, history behind it. Each of the nine plants had its own home process to produce this uranium core. And again, I'm not a chemist, but it gets very detailed and very, the metallurgy behind all that. Um, obviously you can imagine um, that might have obviously done some harm to the environment. So over the years, I guess they discovered that through testing or whatever, that they had to do, um, <laughs> do something about this because it was contaminating the area and a lot of people that lived in the surrounding areas. So in 1990, Congress approved the closure of the plant because of all the contamination. And to this day, this area is actually unfit for human habitation, which means you can't live here. You can't build here. Apparently it's safe enough for people like myself and others to enjoy the area, but because the contamination has been cleaned up. So there was a 4.4 billion cleanup in 2006, and there was actually were thousands of tons of contaminated concrete sludge waste material was removed from this whole area. And the site is still continually monitored and testing to make sure no contaminants are unhealthy for people to be in the area.
Federal Nuclear Fuel Plant in Ohio. David Martin reports an accusation that instead of a cleanup, there was a cover-up. Residents of Fernald, Ohio, have long claimed that the plant, which turned out uranium used in the production of nuclear weapons, emitted massive amounts of radioactive contamination. The federal government is ready to start a major investigation at the Fernald Uranium Processing Plant, and we are told it will center on the possibility of a cover-up of environmental crime. Now that could lead to serious criminal charges. <laughs> The challenge of cleaning up for all was enormous. Getting it done required an elaborate plan, many creative ideas, the ongoing cooperation of all involved, and $4.4 billion. The most visible cleanup activity was taking down the 10 plants and over 300 other structures. But years were also spent excavating the soil beneath and around them, digging out waste in huge pits, and doing silos, and packaging waste for disposal or for safe storage. The first step of the cleanup was safe shutdown. Crews entered the plants to deal with the materials left in them after the sudden halt of all production. Claire Marshall remembers what this was like. We were told to shut off our machines right in the middle of operation. Um, we were not allowed to clean up anything. Uh, tools would get down in there and throw the bread, whether it was in the middle of an operation or just cooking, uh, liquid solids, whatever. They said we could regularly clean up solids, like down there, like we've been in the building. We were making the first of the and raising the money. I was talking to one of the workers there, um, but I was not allowed to film her on camera because this is, um, it's still related to the, the government, um, especially the, the top secret stuff that they were producing and I guess some of the components, very hush-hush. Um, so we're not allowed to film anyone on here, especially an employee of Fernald or the reserve, I should say, preserve. Um, but she told me some really fascinating things, and you know, you can read, you can read about this place for years. There's so much out there, and um, the news has been here. There was broadcast reports that came out here back then um, in the 80s and stuff. So, but yeah, so they actually, this was the facility that made the material for the nuclear um, reactors for, because they didn't want to have a World War III. Um, so after World War II is when they started focusing on, I guess what you would call the nuclear power type processes, you know, when the big bomb and the, the things that ended World War II, this was part of one facility that helped organize 
produce the uranium and they were like metal rods um, and then they, those metal rods would go on to the next phase and this whole process was for the, our national security. It's a very fascinating thing but I cannot ever you know sum this up in in a short video like this but I'm here today just to tour the area but there's trails all through here you know you can take you can take a walk on the trails and seven miles worth of trails so you could spend half the day up here and not see it all and it's a pretty fascinating place and she she told me a lot of information that I just have to I can't retain it all it was so much information at once but I was not allowed like I said to get her on camera You got these little sweat bees hanging around my bike. So I was able to go into the visitor center, as you saw there. And it, it's got the whole layout of before the plant came here, during the plant, the cleanup. It's got the whole history of that, how it was broadcast, uh, how the news media covered it and everything, and especially some of the scandal back in the late 80s. So it was a very, um, and, and the people that worked here were not allowed to talk about even their jobs, what they did. It was very controlled, it was very hush-hush, and the government, it, because they worked for the government for national defense. So, and this was just one facility of many in the country. So she was telling me a lot of things that I, I'm trying to remember now, but it's hard because it was a lot of information. I just wish I could have, um, got her on camera, but I couldn't wasn't allowed to So it's still pretty secretive as far as a lot of the stuff they did the people that worked here were not a, not even allowed to discuss what they did here she was saying there's still people that there's not a lot of them left but there's still people ex ex workers that were employed here they still come in here from time to time and she she said you get all kind of different reactions um, sometimes you get excitement sometimes a lot of pride for the the folks that worked here to help defend the country and you get also the mixture of people that um, come in here with a kind of like a fear and because of some of the stuff that went on probably so a lot of history and you wouldn't know it when you're looking at the preserve like this you just wouldn't know what went on here but if you got a camera and you got a long lens like I said earlier you need to come out here there's it's hard to see. You can't see any of this from the camera, so. so I'll have the link below if you guys want to go check out more about the Fernald plant. You can read to your heart's content. You can hear the bullfrogs. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine just the feeling of driving out of here during the day if I was a worker here back then. 
this this road just driving out after a hard day's work and just happen to be very quiet about everything that would be a weird feeling apparently that it it just was became part of their life well i hope you enjoyed this episode hopefully it was informative like i said i can't cover even one tenth of what this place is all about but go online check it out and i can't believe something like this is so close to my home and it actually only took me like 20 minutes to get here so this is my second time here and every time i come here i learn something new but until next video you guys have a good one and be safe out there and we'll see you on the next one.